all I know. Chasing that dough, hitting that road, getting that money, man. All I know, loading that foe, kicking down doors, getting that money, man. We go make it money. We go take it crystal. We go make it money. We go take it the next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is did Devin Haney do enough to secure the fight with George Cambosis? Cambosis said before the fight that he needs to be impressed. He said, look, he's looking for his next opponent, and he saw Devin fight last night. He's going to see Tank fight tonight, and he's going to see Vasily Lomachenko fight on December 11th. So he said he needs to be impressed, and this is his words. He likes being in fight of the year candidate type of fights and he needed to see some excitement from Devin Haney the question that I'm asking is did Devin Haney do enough to secure the fight with George Cambosis and then I'm asking do you think he will actually get the fight with George Cambosis so it's two part did he do enough and will he get it and this is asking you to predict in the future so I'm turning over to you conspiracy G what do you think well I, I think he did do enough because the performance was lackluster you know, and, <laughs> and Bose was probably watching the fight like, oh, he's food. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. You know what I mean? Looking like Cam Bose is about to eat some soul food in Australia. You know what I mean? So, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> and this is why I'm telling you, I feel like he purposely. Wait, G, are you saying that you are prepared to make a dish if that fight happens? Is that what you're saying? Listen, yo, we going to definitely make a dish. <laughs> Listen, man, I like this kid so much. But that performance, it had. I, I feel like he's 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 doing a magic trick on me. Like no BS. He has to be lying to the streets because that performance just wasn't Haney to me. So if Haney is really this new guy, this Haney 2.0 that rather try to knock a guy out in a fight than to secure uh, rounds, man, then Cambos is going to eat a feast, bro. You know what I mean? So. I think Cambosis definitely will take this fight because I'm pretty confident that Cambosis is like, I could destroy this kid. You know, like he was he was ringside looking at the fight, like, damn, this kid got flaws, you know. And Cambosis is stronger, faster. He he's tricky with the punches. Bro, man, Diaz is like, he's not even that like the, the conversation of top dudes at 135. Cambosis right now, again, he's the champ. He beat Teofimo Lopez, you know what I mean, who beat, like, Lomachenko. Bruh, I honestly think Cambosis is going to take that fight because he just wants that belt that uh, Haney got run through him, and then maybe he could secure a, a tank fight later on in the future, you know. Um, but it seems more likely that Cambosis would do a fight with uh with Haney, you know, um Lou DeBella and, and the zone, they got good relationships and stuff. So I can see that happening. It's like that's gonna be an easy fight to make. And you know how the zone match room, how they give it up. Money's usually not an issue. And you know, <clears throat> on multiple occasions last night was talking about, yeah, yo, we would love to go to Australia. Australia deserves this, yada yada yada. So but you said the zone and who? And match room. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, what as in salute to some of the people in um our oh, no, no, I said Luda Bella. I said Luda Bella had oh, okay, yeah. I just want to make sure. All right, yeah, yeah Luda Bella, Bella, yeah. Relationship with Matchroom and the zone. So, like that fight most likely will happen. You know, Eddie doesn't have a problem throwing a bag at somebody, as we know. And Devin saying, I'm willing to go to your streets, I'm going down under to collect your belts. That's a dream come true for Campos. So he could put on, remember, he was like, Yo, he wants to fight in front of 80,000 people. I don't know if Tank is willing to go to Australia, bro, to, to fight Cambosis. I don't see that happening. Devin Haney said, yo, yo, get my passport ready. We we traveling. So I think he did enough to, to get that fight. I wasn't impressed by it, but I think Cambosis is looking at it like, all right, I'm about to eat some food. You know what I mean? And I'm about to do it in front of all my people so we can celebrate. You know? Hey, man, this is, this, is, this is good. This is huge. That's why I changed my name to Crocodile Dungee. Because I think salute to Boston Bros, Australia. They deserve this, you know, and I think it'll be a great fight. All right. So before uh, I throw it to you, Trill Dollar Bill, <clears throat> excuse me, Um, I, I forgot we have uh, some things we'd like to share. Uh, the first is going to be a tweet from uh, none other than Roly Romero, who was forced to <laughs> this one out. 
Uh, Roly wrote, I really do feel bad for Devin. Even if you don't have power, you can hurt him. One of the sloppiest and most boring fighters in the history of boxing. You can't even market him because he has zero personality other than I'm a spoiled little B. <laughs> zero power at all. I swear he can he, he, he can punch a cracker and not crack it. The look on the the look of disappointment on Hearn's face today. All right, so that's what Roley had to say. Uh, take a look at what Ryan Garcia had to say about no, this is disrespect. Man. Hey, man, this is this is this is that's what happens when you get into these. So Ryan Garcia tweeted, "Good fight, but the hunger to do something special was not there." So that's what uh, Ryan Garcia had to say. So trillion dollar bill. Do you think that Devin Haney did enough? And do you think that Campbell's is actually going to pick him to fight next? I think Cam Bosis wants some baked macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think G Chef G need to put that on the menu. That's you definitely know? on the menu. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> uh, because uh Cambosis is not playing around. He said he wants some easy work. He said, What? And you see his face lit up. I've never seen his. his like, he said, For a, a good title offense, what? Back home, his. At first, it was like, you know, want to see a, a, a good show. And now it was like, Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> you know, for the 80,000 fans, you know, in Australia, let's do it. He was really excited about that and the title defense and make it for all the, the belts and all that. Like, make it official, undisputed now. Uh, official, you know what I'm saying? Kid Bosis is jumping to that. And I think that Eddie uh, will, will pay for that. You know, um, it's just, you know, uh, if what you were saying in, in the previous episode, um, bro, um, now is this is what people are looking at Haney like this. Like, he, Haney has to be the money, not the pretty, right? That's how he's going to be. That's how he's going to win. That's the only way he can win is he'd be the money version of Floyd and not try to be the pretty version of Floyd. Because like you was alluding to, we fell in love with Devin's skills. Not this want to be tough guy persona. So if he sticks to the skills money blueprint, right? And and not get too caught up in the he can have a good night. But other than that, people are looking at him as food. Like they're willing to run through anything he got because they feel it is not going to hurt them. The respect is gone. It went from, you know, it's going to be a boring fight because all you're going to do is to now to it's like they don't respect him. They're smiling now to get in there with him. You know? So, yeah, I think he can secure the fight because I think Kibosis feel like he can win and this will be a good showing. You know, he'll be good and he'll be able to, you know, um, defend his belts in front of his countrymen. So I think that this fight can take place and I think this fight can happen. And I think that Kibosis can win if Devin goes in there with this mentality of not being sure. Of him. You know what I'm saying? Ned says something and we laughed at it, but it's true. Maybe he does need to go speak to somebody. We see these sports therapists all the time. Maybe he needs to, so worried about what other people were thinking, maybe he needs to worry about himself and just focus on what made him get to this level. You know, because the pressure and hearing things from other people, we done seen this with other athletes have to go and talk to somebody because of the pressure outside and, and stuff influences and stuff like that. So maybe that, but Devin needs to get back to what made Devin Devin. Yeah, and, and just to add to something you said, that was a great point. Whenever Floyd Mayweather, well, Floyd would train with Roger, Roger Mayweather was more offensive minded. When he would come out of a fight where he got hit too much or he felt like he was taking too much punishment, <clears throat> excuse me, he would go back to his dad 
Floyd Mayweather Sr. Because Mayweather Sr. was defensive minded. Mayweather Sr. was about hit and not get hit. Mm -hmm. And so whenever he felt like he was losing his defensive principles, he would go back to his dad because he knew his dad was a stickler and he knew that his dad was going to make sure that he kept his defensive focus. And I say that to say, Devin, message. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, Ned. Uh, yeah, Haney did enough to secure the fight. And I, of course, I, I, out of all the challenges, I don't think um, Cambosis would give up undisputed in front of his people in Australia just to, like, you know, put on. So, and I, I doubt um, Eddie would miss out on such a big opportunity right there. Make let Cambosis miss out on a big opportunity right there to go and potentially lose the belts to PBC or top rank again. So, you know, so this fight, I, I think, uh, I think Cambosis is licking his lips and rushing to sign these sign this contract. So is Haney, but you know, I, I think, I think, I think uh, it's, it's probably going to be on the works by. Either it's going, it's either going to be in the works by Monday or Tuesday tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow or Tuesday. So, get yeah, ready, also, people. Too. Oh, sorry, my bad for cutting you off, man. It's all good. Um, also, when you look at it, Kimbosis is kind of like what um um Joseph Parker is to New Zealand. Like, yeah, PBC top rank. They're not going over there. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to those those countries. Eddie Hearn is willing to do that. So Eddie Hearn's looking at it as a major opportunity to to capture another market share. Like. We go to Australia, even if Devin Haney loses, maybe we could secure a, a, a new like segment where we could bring boxing to Australia and make more money. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <clears throat> well, did he do enough? He won. So to me, winning is enough. Um, you know, I guess maybe Devin felt like if he would have won, say a, a sweep or you know, a gentleman sweep, we'll call it. Uh, and boxing 10 to 2, 10 rounds to 2, and and played it safe, people would have said, oh, uh, he's 11 to 2. Huh? 11 to 2, like T.O. said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, maybe boxing needs to add a 13th round <laughs> to, to eliminate draws. No draws. <laughs> no draws. But, um, you know, I feel like if he would have won 10 to 2, maybe he feels like, People would have said, oh, it was boring. He doesn't deserve to fight. We don't want to see him fight Cambosis. But at the end of the day, like, you got to stay true to your principles. And if you're the most skilled, most talented, hardest to hit, you got to be that guy. And you got to do that. And, and, you, and, and, and you were blessed, like, legitimately blessed with the WBC strap. So now people got to see you if they want Undisputed. So at some point, they got to see you if they want Undisputed. Now, don't get it twisted. Mauricio Suleiman is, is calling it Undisputed, but they're saying that all the other sanctioning bodies are saying it's not. Again, it's Mauricio's belt, though. So there's a lot of debate or whatever. The bottom line is you hold a strap. So people got to come see you, and you got to win convincingly. Um, And so... With that being said, he won. So I think winning is enough. The question, though, is did he is he going to get the fight next? And I'm not so sure of that. You know, the, to quote the great Lee Corso, the analyst of college football, not so fast, my friend. Javante Tank Davis is fighting tonight, and Vasily Lomachenko is fighting on December 11th. Now, Vasily Lomachenko is the guy I'm I'm, I'm most focused on. Because he never lost that WBC title in the ring. He gave it up to become franchised. And he lost to Teofimo Lopez. But that was a close fight in which he started late. And he came on late. And he's, he was asking for a rematch. And Teo didn't want to give it to him. And he knocked out Nakatani, someone that uh, Teo struggled with. And now he's fighting Komei. If Vasily Lomachenko knocks out Kome on December 11th, I wouldn't be surprised if they announce Vasily Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez um, in you, Australia. You, you meant Kambosis. Uh, Kambosis, I'm sorry, yes. It was, uh, versus George Kambosis in Australia for Undisputed. That, that, that's how they're going to promote it because Eddie wouldn't be involved and they're going to promote it as Undisputed. And it's going to be a, a huge storyline because it's going to be Vasily trying to become two-time undisputed, 
Cam Bosich defends his his titles in Australia. Vasily Lomachenko got the Ukraine. He got Australia. Plus, the American public is familiar now with both Vasily Lomachenko and George Cambosis. I think it will be a huge fight if Vasily Lomachenko knocks out Kome. And remember, the caveat that's going to be mentioned is, yes, Devin has the WBC strap, but he never won it in the ring. It was vacated by Vasily Lomachenko to be elevated to franchise status. And the argument's going to be, Devin didn't even look good against JoJo. Like, so what, if if Vasily Lomachenko knocks out Richard Comey, I feel like, and, and, I, hear, and I, I hear people saying top rank isn't going to do it. Top rank wouldn't have done it if they were in a position of power. You just lost Terrence Bud Crawford. You just lost Teofimo Lopez as the undisputed king. So now you need to get that back. So you letting Vasily Lomachenko go to Australia is a chance for you to get them belts back. So remember, you're not in the position of authority at this particular point in time. So I think Bob would jump at the chance to get those belts back. Lou DiBella has proven that he's willing to let fighters fight cross promotion. Remember, that's the situation that got him fired with Deontay Wilder. He got Deontay Wilder meeting with the zone when he was with PBC and some people didn't like it. So again, did he do enough? Yes, he won. But is it going to be the most intriguing fight at the end of this week? If Tank knocks out Cruz in an impressive fashion and Vasily Lomachenko, I just think Tank's a pay-per-view star. Tank's fighting on pay-per-view right now. The only one of these guys fighting on pay-per-view, Tank. Cambosis fought. It wasn't on pay-per-view. It was supposed to be, and then it was they thought they were going to lose money. They didn't do it. Tank's the only one about to fight on pay-per-view right now. So if Tank wanted this fight, I can see why they why Cambosis would pick Tank over Devin Haney. If Vasily Lomachenko knocks out Richard Comey and the fire starts, you know ESPN going to be pushing their storylines. Oh, you know ESPN going to be pushing them storylines. So get ready for it. I can see him picking those two guys over Devin just because it's going to be a more intriguing fight. But when it, you, I'm looking at it as him going to Lomachenko or Tank, that's a more difficult fight than a Haney. And this is just a, his first title defense, right? And he's trying to put on for his country. Like, would you want to put on for your country knowing that you're going to pick a guy that could knock your head clean off? You know what I'm saying? Like, Haney is a big enough name. He has a WBC strap. That will make you undisputed. He's the easiest out of the three right now. Why not take the easiest fight? Why go after, you know, a dude that's known for violating dudes and another guy that can outbox you every round? It doesn't make sense to, to, to do that. Like, it's just easier to go with a Haney because, and I see what you're saying, your argument about Lomachenko, you know, technically never lost a WBC strap. But if I could go the easier route, you know, and it's in Australia, and I want to make a, a good showing for myself in front of my peoples, I'd rather take that Haney fight because it's an easier fight than a Lomachenko or a Tank Davis. All right, so look at what you're saying. It's an easier fight. Now, what happens if you take Devin in Australia and you lose? You just lost the easier fight, and you lost your belts to everyone. You know, sometimes you got to take I, – I think Cam Bosis is a risk taker. He's the, he, look, at, look at what he did with Tio. So you so you you call out Devin expecting to, to beat Devin, but let's be let's be clear about it. If Devin boxes and does what he's supposed to do for 12 rounds, he'd be a difficult fight for anyone. Not saying Campos wouldn't win, but I'm just saying there's no easy way out at the top. Mm -hmm. And so I think you know when you make your decision, you should make it based on compensation, the biggest, and maybe Devin will get the fight. I'm just saying I'm not sold yet. Based on the fact we got two major players about to fight, uh, in the yeah, next also, week. so we know that Bob he has a tendency to lowball people, man. So I don't know if Bob's willing to pay that type of bag to secure Bob that. is he not in a position of power. Bob lost Terrence Bud Crawford and Teofimo Lopez, just lost all the belts that were once with top rank. So he needs he needs an opportunity to get those belts back. So you think Bob is going to risk it all? Because this is literally like a big gamble. Like, 
hey, Lomachenko, you have to go to Australia. We'll we'll pay this money to to get you there, this and the third. But what happens if they lose? I don't think Bob seems like he's real safe with his money. I don't think Bob's gonna take that chance. You don't think he learned his lesson by now? Like, so what 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 other options does he have? If Cam Bolsters is if Cam Bolsters is willing to give the fight to to Vasily Lomachenko, I don't think he has any choice. But to do whatever he can to make that fight. Yeah, and then it looked like you were about. Oh, about I just want to say one last thing. Okay. And and uh, Haney, because he has matchroom to zone, like uh, essentially they probably don't even need a pay per view because these guys are known for just throwing money away. So Kimbosa's is probably going to pick the easiest route. I don't need to be a pay per view star to sell this. I just need to sign a contract with with Eddie Hearn to make this fight happen, and I'm gonna get a secure bag. If he goes with PBC. Then it's all about selling the fight, this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? Like, it's a difference. So I just – I think the Kimbosis-Haney fight is just the easiest option for Kimbosis. All right. Well, ESPN, worldwide leader in sports, mm-hmm. biggest platform in sports. If you want to just make it free, make it free on ESPN. But I, I think – go go ahead, Ned. What are we going to say? Nah, nah. I was just gonna say, you know, Eddie's always always gonna have those rematch clauses. So these two gentlemen, if he fought Devin, if he fights Devin, they're both gonna have um a rematch clause either way. So, and also, they gave away the T.O. um Loma Chico fight for free. I don't think they want to re- lose lose any more money giving away this for free too. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Remember, they put Sean Porter on an app. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything else to add. I don't know about anyone else, though. But... Right. <laughs> Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros. <laughs> You're welcome. You're all welcome.